going straight to the booth. Bro, you're doing everything but my interview, bro. Yeah, come, bro, bro, come on, bro, come on, bro, 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 please, bro, please. Bro. come on, bro. Doctor, doctor, just talks coming soon. Yo, wait, wait. We got work to do. What, what y'all doing, man? Oh, yeah. Lately, I've been moving through the motion. Ocean. Ocean. Feel like I'm drowning in the ocean. Doctor, doctor, I never asked you how you got your name. You know what's crazy is that, um, a lot. Like a lot more lately, people have been asking me that, and people never used to ask before. <laughs> it's like they like now they give a fuck. <laughs> you feel me? Like, um, so the, the the nickname Doctor came from a teacher in middle school, Miss Olaby. When I went to the museum, she would call me Doctor because my dad is a doctor, and I was like a little problem child. So she'd be like, "Oh, I'll, I'm I'm gonna remind you every day to be just like your dad." And so then my friends thought it was funny, so they started saying it, started calling me doctor. Um, it stuck, and like when I started rapping, I was like, all right, I'm gonna just, you know what I'm saying, be doctor. And then one day I was in, in my man's crib, my homie Rel, and he was, um, I had walked in, and he was like, doctor, doctor. And I was like, damn, that shit had a nice ring to it. Like, you know what, I'm gonna just run with that. You know what I'm yeah, just stuck from there. Yeah, on. so shout out to my man Ro. That's fire. Word. Going into beginning when you first started music. Yeah, so. I, I uh I always been uh, a creative person. I always been somebody who's been in tune with like art and, and media, you know what I'm saying? And music, you know what I'm saying? All these fields of, of creativity, these different outlets. Um, but I really like started to get heavy, heavy into music when um making my own music when um when I finished high school, like towards the end of high school. Mm. Where I was like, that's when I was like, now I really am dedicated to this. Like <laughs> this is this is who I want to be, you know? Uh -huh. so was there a specific like artist at the time or is it just at whatever? that time? Shit, I'll probably say Lil Wayne at that time. At that time it was definitely probably Lil Wayne. He was going crazy. Just taking everybody beats and flipping everybody joint. It's a hit. Wayne flipped it. It's another hit. So I was like, damn, that's crazy. You so know, I saw something like a week ago, two weeks ago, and it was talking about like the best like mix hits of all time. And somebody was tight because they said um they didn't think that the drought two should have been on there. And I was mm. like, I don't know. If you were Wayne Finn, that Yo, Drought 2 I ain't gonna lie. It. Drought 2, <laughs> Drought 3. <laughs> the Drought is over series. Those was crazy. Like, that. everything he was doing back then was was insane. Because what was, what was the shit that he rapped over? It was the, the Beyonce shit. And he flipped yeah, it. Yeah, the Upgrade You joint. Ooh. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was, was one of them ones, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah. That that was that one was crazy. Well, um, for sure. But yeah, that it's the time. But yeah, so high school. Yeah, so mean? around that time I was just like, you know, a, a lot of dudes around me was making music and you know, I was just like, yo, I'm gonna just I I just want to rap. Like I just want to spit fire, you know what I'm saying? Just say cool shit. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Like the way I the way I perceive things and the way I live through things. So you know what I'm saying? That's just always been what my music is. It's just me just retelling my perspective on certain things that have happened to me and that have happened around me, you know? Yeah. But a lot of, like, the content that you have in, the, in your music, because I was going to ask specifically, we jump right into it because talk about the undeniable. We talk about a song like Family Court, which is yeah. um, a lot about, like, what is going on in your life. Right, right. So yeah, I was definitely. Um, so, yeah, like I said, my music has always been that. You know what I'm saying? The Undeniable and If Not Me Then Who, these are the uh, the first two tapes that I've had on all streaming platforms. Before that, I was on um, SoundCloud. I got about three tapes on SoundCloud, Soda and Medicine, Three Pac and 19. When it came to The Undeniable <clears throat> and Family Court in specific, because Family Court was the first one of the first songs I had for mm -hmm. that tape, it was like, at that time, like I said, I was just, I was going through 
a lot of different things. And you could hear, actually, I recorded Family Court. I had COVID while I was recording Family Court. I didn't even know it. Um, so that's, if you listen to it, like my voice sounds like a little extra raspy. Yeah, it's and it's because I was losing my, I was losing my voice and shit, you know what I'm saying? But I was just writing, you know, everything I write, I write from the heart and it comes straight to my mind, you know what I'm saying? Everybody be like, yo, how do you freestyle? How do you do this? How do you do that? The beat really tells me what to say. It gives me the energy, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, word. Uh, and what about if not me, then then who? If not me, then who? I actually, I was almost done with if not me, then who? Around the time where I released the under novel, so it's like I work, I, I work on, I find myself working on so many different things at once that it's like I'll have like two tapes, like one is like seventy percent ready, <laughs> the other one's like forty percent ready. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, uh-huh. um, but then I don't like getting ahead of my ahead of myself by by releasing too much. You know what I'm saying? Or too fast. Um, so, if not me, then who? After I dropped the Undeniable, I had like a bunch of songs that I was like, "All right, this is the next tape." But let me give myself some time to to allow it to develop. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So things changed over over a certain time. Like so, on if not me, then who? The Intro is focused and focused. I've had, I've had that song for over two years now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, White Cherry Gelato. I had that for over a year. Um, Bripto Burnsy got finished two weeks before the tape came out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like everything is happening around this time, but I'm also still making new music and shit like that. But the mm-hmm. Bripto Burnsy beat I did have for about a year at that point. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just. Um, Wanting to cultivate the music is, you know, what makes me hold on to it and like, you know, but if not me, then who dropped in December and I just been pushing that right now and I got more work on the way. I've heard some of it. Yeah. And it's fine. Go looking. <laughs> it's fine. Go looking. I'm trying to just, you know, <laughs> keep, keep putting my heart into it, you know, and um, see where it takes me for sure. The last interview that I did before I, before I mess up my foot. We record at uh, at Lilo Studio, mm-hmm. and he played something. It was like you you was you singing or something. I was like, Who oh, okay, I, yeah. And I'm, he was like, yo, that's Doc. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> shout out to Lilo. That's my man. <laughs> shout out to Lilo because I know um, he's a great engineer, and his just his his ear for the sound is is ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. word. Shout out to Lilo. Um, he definitely helped me a lot through through the past two tapes. Is that one of the people that you work with the most or um, kind of? Well, in part, mm-hmm. Lilo, Rondon from Fight Back, Jesus, Sav, we all get around each other and kind of like let the music, you know, mm-hmm. like live in this space, you know what I'm saying, where we all have heard it or are able to hear it and, you know, critique it and say, you know, this could be better or you should do this or you should do that, you know what I'm saying? And then also, like, I, I have, I share a lot of my music with um, Teddy, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Sparks. Um, and I let, sometimes, like, you know, on, on The Undeniable, he curated the playlist, you feel me? Like, the order of where the songs went in. Uh, um, Sparks? Yeah. Okay. On If Not Me, Then Who, he was the first person to hear fun, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was the first person to hear fun. The concept of fun, we came up with in his room one night. He was just chilling, sipping, you know what I'm saying, playing beats or whatever. And we came up with the concept of fun. The next day, I, I, I recorded it with Lilo. You know? That's why. That's so, um, the, the freestyles that you've done. Yeah. Because I like those, bro. I got those, more coming. Those. You got some more coming? I got more coming. Are those just Lucy's, or are you going to put those, like, in... Like you gonna put those, incorporate those, or just just to show people that what yeah. you can do. <laughs> I was I was trying to I was trying to keep it low, like keep it low, cause I was I've been using those to build you know um, content on my social media, and also to just bring a different flair to when I go to do interviews and podcasts and shit like that. You know, I just want to bring a different type of energy. I want people to see. You know, what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I'm really. I'm really, talk, I'm really talking this shit right now. I'm really talking this shit, and I'm I'm not gonna stop neither. Word, but um, yeah, I got a tape coming. <clears throat> Excuse me, 
I got a tape coming. It's basically like a tape of freestyles. Mm. You feel me? So <clears throat> the two freestyles from the pod is going to be on there. It's Down and Out, and I did Dead Presidents. Um, the Corner Kings joints is going to be on there. That was uh, I did a little Dirk beat, and I did a uh, Sauce Walker freestyle beat. Um, and I probably got like like six more freestyles that, that niggas haven't heard. I might have teased them on my IG, mm -hmm. but those is going to be on there too. So it's going to be like a it's going to be like a freestyle tape, like a mixtape. This one obviously I can't put on all DSPs because I can't profit off of those beats that I don't own. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be one of those mainly for SoundCloud things. And like I said, I've been using it to build content and push that. That's fine. Cuz especially works. now cuz you got to keep your name and the algorithm and got to keep it like doing that or you yeah. kind of just Yeah, and me like I don't I don't I don't be on social media so crazy. Like I, I'll post on my story, but like I'll forget to post on my actual page. You know what I'm saying? I and um, you know you got to keep up with shit like that, and it's it's, it's tough. It's it tough. It's, I don't know. You know I you respect the other people the that do it. it. Yeah, you got to build the habit of it. I respect the people that do it because it's like it takes time. Like yeah. Savage, somebody that does it all the time. Like he, right. he's on it. Like he's always posting. Yeah, man. when like, I see foreign. Yo, I'm like, yo, this dude, how does he do it? <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? Like, how does he do it? My man got posts running all, all day. You know all what I'm saying? Day, all and that's day. cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I strive to be that attentive to that to that platform, too. Mm-hmm. Because, I don't know, is it just, like, who you are? Or is it, because, like, for me, the reason why I don't do it, I post on my story, the same, but, like, I won't post pictures, because it's the same thing. Like, I, or I won't post a lot of stories, because I'm just, like, I feel like I'm posting too much. I feel like I'm doing too much, so I won't post. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I just, well, first, I don't really take too many pictures of myself. Like, I don't I don't take selfies. Mm. Like, I really, I can't, I, it feels weird to be like, <laughs> you know, with the camera in front of my face. Like, it feels weird like that. You know what I'm saying? I can take a picture every once in a while. All right. Or if I'm out looking nice, all right, cool, I want to flick. Right? So then those will go on the gram. But in between time, I'm not like, you know... I'm not taking pictures, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas be taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for real. Oh, no, it's not a bad thing, but you feel me? Like, I don't know. You, you, different uh, strokes for different folks, you feel me? That's all it is for real, for real. Right. Um, like, get a little bit more serious, because you uh, oh, talk shit. about... <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. <laughs> So let me ask you about this charger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not glad. I'm going to ask you about Azel and like how that was for you and how that like changed you as a, as a man and whatnot. Well, I mean, first I could say that um, parenthood is probably the best experience that I've ever had in my life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the most meaningful, you know? Um, obviously, I love music. I love art. I love my family. But to have a child is like, it's a beautiful experience. And it's one that will test you and show you every facet of yourself and all types of emotions, you know what I'm saying? So I had Azel when I was 22. I'm gonna be 32 next um, Saturday. <laughs> uh, so he about to be 10 years old this upcoming year. And it's just been, it's been great, like all the way through. Obviously there's been trying times, you know what I'm saying? And um, there's certain things that you want to teach kids and there's certain things that you want to protect your kids from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's definitely something to, to navigate, you know? Definitely keep you on your toes at all times. <laughs> but Azel's great. He's doing good. Just finished third grade, about to go to fourth grade. We um, we in the middle of the summer right now. He's playing Little League. Mm -hmm. I coach his team. Shout out to Pat Boy. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Dave. He's the other coach. Shout out to Gabe, Rob, Frank, Fish, Rico. All the other coaches, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, it's cool for the kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a good thing to teach them stuff and then also see them want to learn and then want to compete too, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, I have a great time, you know? It's uh, nerve-wracking at times, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Kids don't really listen all the time, so, you know. But um, but it's cool. I like it. What position are you doing? Well, oh, you got moving around. yeah, we got the kids kind of, like, moving around so that they can learn. The different positions, but Azel likes um, he likes shortstop, but also he um, pitched last game and he did pretty good. So now he kind of want to pitch. So okay, we just kind of let him do what he want to do yeah, for the most part. Figure it out, like I'll flow into it. Like when I 
started, my dad was a coach, the same thing, and I played short. And then when I got to high school, or oh, middle school, I started playing third, and then I played the outfield, and I was all over the place. So yeah, he's, that, he's, he's all over the place. He loves baseball, he loves soccer, basketball, you know, he's a very sports-oriented kid, and he always wanted to be outside. I mean, he played video games too, but, you know, he, he got a good balance. Mm -hmm. And the other reason why I bring him up is because um, one of your biggest fan. I saw like that video when you did that the open mic. Oh yeah. And he yeah. was sitting right there. And he was yeah. doing it with you. That was at um, Bougie Brews on on uh, Main Street in Yonkers. I had went there. I forget. They was doing. A, uh, I guess a kind of big event that day. But um, I think Tom Ray was hosting. Shout out to Tom Ray. That's a good dude. Um, and my man Malls was there, and me and Skull went over there to perform, and it was cool. It was cool. I liked it. And Azel, as soon as I, as soon as I'm getting ready to perform, Azel like, yo, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? Like he acting antsy. I'm like, yo, what's up? And he's like, I want to perform with you. I'm like, you know the words. <laughs> he's like looking at me like, yeah, I know. Like if he wrote them, like so. I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. And um, yeah, it was good. Azel loves music too. You know, sometimes I let him, you know, get up on the mic. He even recorded a song when he was a little baby. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, I don't have that file anymore on my laptop, but I remember he had recorded a whole song when he was a little baby. You know what I'm saying? So he loves it. He likes being around it. You know what I'm saying? He's a very, he's a very creative kid himself. At getting older, and I'm not, I don't have kids yet, but like. I kind of like observe other people and I see like what they're doing that I like I admire that they are able to do with their kids. So I can keep that in mind because is that something that I'm going to be able to do myself? You know what I mean? So no, I like sure. that. That It was cool to see like him sitting there and you going in and then he's saying the next like line. Right. You know, that, that shit was tough yeah. to me. And it's funny too because after we finished performing, he like, all right, now I'm going to perform by myself. I'm like, uh, what you gonna perform? He's like, your song. <laughs> like, bro, you can't just come come up on my song to perform. Like, that's not how it works. So, a question that I've been asking everybody, yeah, uh, is if money wasn't a thing, like, because we live in a society. Well, it's kind of the world, but we live in a society, especially living in New York, where. Money is kind of like the main thing. Like we have to worry about money all the time, working and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. If you didn't have to worry about money, and you can just do whatever you wanted. Like you retire, you, you could retire right mm -hmm. now. What would it be that you'd be doing? I'll, <laughs> I, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll probably get back into drawing. You know what I'm saying? Get back into my 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 artwork heavy, mm. because one thing that I've always wanted, you know what I'm saying. But well, besides music, because I would I would do music, I would continue to do music, mm. you know what I'm saying. If I if I retire, but I I want to give people something, you know what I'm saying. Like I want to give people something physical, you know what I'm saying. Like to have something of mine hanging in somebody's house or hanging in everybody that I know's house. I think mm. that's like. That's worth just as much as you know monetary value. It is because it goes on forever. Right. You know what I mean? That's that's a good. I didn't know that you that you drew and stuff like that. Well, so. I mean, I, I I used to draw a lot when I was younger. I haven't really drawn so much in my in the recent years. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I I dilly dally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I got a question from uh, from G. <laughs> from my brother G. <laughs> yeah. He that's told funny. me. Uh, to ask you these two questions. Oh, uh, God. He told, <laughs> he Not told this me, guy. <laughs> <laughs> he said that only that only you would know about this. So he said to ask what happened to the definition of cool. Ooh. And are you ever going to release it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, G. G annoying. Well, that's crazy. The definition of cool. All right, so the definition of cool was the acronym DOC, you know, mm. definition of cool. My friend Felicia, who is a poet, and she was part of a dance group when we was in high school, and they was definition of cool. And when I seen that, I was like, yeah, I'm jacking that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need it. I need it. <laughs> so 
that was supposed to be uh, one of the projects that I dropped, one of the tapes that I dropped. And like, so like I said, this was back in high school. We was talking definition of cool shit. Me and my niggas in high school and then my friends who knew about music, who knew about uh, me making music and shit. But I didn't end up releasing a a, a solo project till I was like, 24. <laughs> Till I was like 24. I think I dropped soda and medicine when I was like 24. Niggas was always like for years and it was like, yo, where's definition of cool? Where's definition of cool? <laughs> like that was the, the running joke. Where's definition of cool? And um Yeah, I ain't never dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's not to say that I that I, you know. I honestly don't think about it, but that's a that's a great project name. You feel me? Like <laughs> nah, that's is. such a solid project name. So who knows? Maybe Definition of Cool will come out. It's not gonna come out the next project because the next project named and the one after that. <laughs> but <laughs> Definition of Cool, G, just wait on it. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, I think this was G, or this was either G or Rondon. And they was uh, told me to ask about Popovich. Ooh, <laughs> yo, what's good? Damn, Popovich. Wow. All right. Popovich is a song that's me, well, foreign, Zay Body Bags, and me, and I. <laughs> Word. And that's a, that's a tough one. I ain't going to lie. We gonna get that out soon. That's a tough one, but yeah, we had Popovich. We was in in Impact one day. We was squatted in Impact. It was a bunch of us. Madheads was in there, but um, we ended up recording that track, and that that one's gonna go crazy. I'm not gonna lie. High energy. Hmm. So, and so then the the one that you said is coming out. Next, like you, you have you said you have names for those already. Um, you, you the next project, it? this this um tape that's basically um compiled freestyles over different okay. industry yeah, beats. Okay. It's called Tomorrow Never Dies. Hmm. Word, and um the other one I'm working on the tape with my man King JC. You know, executive produced by him. I can't let that name go though. Not for that. Not that's yet. Not I can't. I could. I could. I could do. I could give you tomorrow. Never dies. <laughs> Yo, <son. I> could, <laughs> fuck. But the freestyle one. Yeah, you, that's tomorrow. You never dies. You close to doing dropping that one, or you know you something? Make us wait a little bit longer. Um, I want to say. I want to say early fall. Yeah, I want to say early fall. Okay. I don't want to keep niggas waiting too long. Um, the last one was in December, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Niggas like, oh uh, yeah, speed it along, brother. <laughs> no, nah, feel you, nah, for sure, for sure. I was definitely trying to get out. Uh, you know, I'd be trying to do fucking. If I could, bro, I'd do five projects a year. You know what I'm saying? If I could roll them out like that, I don't want to just be giving it away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta hold on to some things, and also me as a creative, like I like to hold on to my music. You know what I'm saying? When you hear Summer Tomorrow Never Dies, just know that I've been listening to them songs for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I've heard them thousands of times. You feel me? Like, I'll listen to a song thousands of times before I even let anybody else listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or whatever the case may be. You know? How are you... How do you feel when... You hear it like somebody else like playing and you out in a spot. Cause a lot of people have said that. I've heard one person that said it was Sko, but somebody I've heard other people say that like they've listened to it so much that like they almost don't want to listen to it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like yeah, they, that's um... in the process of trying to perfect it to get it to where you wanted to hear it. Yeah. Like, so like after I drop, usually when I drop, like let's say. Um, if not me, then who, right? I dropped in December. When I tell you, I dropped that tape, I did the show for it, and then I didn't listen to music for the next three <laughs> three weeks to like a month. I didn't listen to any music because like 
obviously, you know, um, my peoples, shout out to all my peoples that that show love and support. They posting it, reposting it, tagging me, tagging this, that, the next thing I'm posting. So I'm hearing this shit every I, I can't even turn on nothing in the car with the music off. You feel me? Like just trying to you try to recoup. But but it's cool though because like um with if not me then who? So I did that like three or four weeks, no music. I'm like bugging. And um at like the end of the fourth week, I was just like hungry. Jumped back to recording and I had Tomorrow Never Dies like recorded within um the first two months of the year probably. Yeah. I had it fully recorded in the first two months of the year. I was just I was like I came back way more eager and I'm like, now it's just coming to me, you know what I'm saying? The bars is just flowing and I'm hearing beats and I'm like, yo, I forgot about that beat. Matter of fact, load that bitch up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, word. So that's cool. Yeah. It's definitely a good feeling. That's good. I'm glad that you're that you're like staying with it, bro. Because like a lot of the like I said, obviously people haven't heard it. Hello. And being lucky enough to be around people as they're like playing it or like editing it, like I said with Lilo. The stuff sounds good. So I can't wait for people to hear it. You know what I mean? And I can't hear the finished project and how it's going to sound when you finally put pro the project all together. Because for me, like, one of the biggest things as a as a listener, for me, um, everybody's different, but I like to listen to stuff in full. Right. Because something that I did when, when we were younger, I would listen to a song and I will listen to it over and over again before the project comes out and the project comes out and... I'll skip that song because I don't listen to it a million times. You, same, same, <laughs> you know what I mean? Same. So, um, like J. Cole, like I listen to J. Cole, my favorite artist. I listen, I listen to Workout Mad Time before the project came Yo, out. Yo, I feel you. And then when the project come out, it fits in the on the project how it should, but like I don't want to listen to that shit no more. Right, as soon as the beat <laughs> drop, you like next. <laughs> yeah. I feel that though. So, That's why I mean I take a lot of time into um into the arrangement of the songs because I'm like as soon as one song finish, I'm like, all right, what's going to, you know what I'm saying? What's going to hit him as soon as it comes in? You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's what I want, you know? So when I when I put together um, If Not Me Then Who, it was like, I think it was like focused, came in and it was like, all right, this is sh lyrical shit. And then the next one was cheat clapping. It's like, boom, as soon as cheat clapping hit, niggas going to stay online. You know what I'm saying? Then the third track, I think, was White Cherry Gelato with, with uh, my man The Fourth. And that beat is just so captivating. My man, um, Jula did that beat. That beat is just so captivating. That niggas is just like, and we both floated on that. Then after that is um, is Yonka Streets, and that shit is like it gives you that super dark feeling as soon as it comes in with the with the um with the bells. Shout out to my man um, Nick from Triforce. He made that beat, and shout out to my man Fade too. He was on that song. Mm -hmm. But after that track, after. Is is Bripto Burnsy. And Bripto Burnsy is like that's Amen and Rondon. Pfft, insane. So that one goes crazy. Then after that is um is fun, which is another jeweler beat, and that's me and Skull. That shit go pfft. niggas be playing that in the spot. It's it's lit, it's up. Um then it's for certain with my man JX. Shout out to JX. Mm-hmm. And that's another that's another fight back beat that my man um, Abu did. Mm -hmm. So it was like I I tried to like really calculate like what order I was putting the songs in. You know what I'm saying? I even have it I have it written on my wall in my room because I was just like fucking with it so much. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the time that I was working on it. Mm -hmm. For me, if there's anything that you ever need for me, like if it's something like yeah. as, as far as an opinion, like. Yeah, I mean, you know how we are, we, of we course, already... like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely send you the music, and you know what I'm saying. I gotta get a, gotta get a part two after the tape drops. Mm -hmm, for you know sure. What I'm saying so, come in here, get a part two with you, and you know what I'm saying. It's just, I'm, I'm glad to be here, glad to be able to support your platform the way you, that you support mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Of course, and bro. It's great to do more of this, and when you going, when you going to open up the freestyle segment, cause <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You right. want to be the first one. <laughs> Yo, let me know. We could do it. We could do it. Absolutely. You know? I ain't got you. I'm definitely okay. down for that. 
No, I definitely appreciate you, but I appreciate absolutely. you for, for coming out and, and doing this. And Yeah, for sure. You know, I'll definitely be back soon, for sure. For sure. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I don't know which camera it is because it's a bunch of them. I don't even think I looked at the camera this whole time. Peace. Lately, I've been moving through the motion. Feel like I'm drowning in the ocean.